Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago I went to the jungle and got ill. Very <laughs> ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a fuck about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. Welcome back to Zestology. Every once in a while, I like to record these podcasts out and about, and over the last year and a half, I've done that a bit less, and... I suppose a lot of us have done a lot of things out and about a bit less over the last year and a half. But um, yeah, I prepare for a slight bit of gloating today because I am at the moment in Cyprus sitting, um, well, I'm, I'm doing a sort of coastal walk at the moment from the Tomb of the Kings, which is on the outskirts of Paphos, into Paphos itself. It's my attempt at being a normal adult and not just watching Bamsi the Bear on my honeymoon. We've, we've each given ourselves a day off to come and explore and um, this podcast features one of the most innovative podcast microphone techniques ever in that I'm recording it on my phone, which normally has a very good mic, but when it's quite windy as it is today, the mic isn't very good. So I'm holding it under my T-shirt. I think it works okay. Um, if it doesn't work okay, I've just wasted half an hour, but there you go. So I wanted to record a solo cast, and coming up in today's podcast... Are we talking about improving your HRV, detoxing, uh, a new innovative type of blue blocking glasses? Um, I want to talk about a book that well, it might not change your life, but it'll get you thinking about your life a little bit more deeply. And also talk about purifying water. So let's start with heart rate variability. Um, my a lot of people who listen to this podcast use an Oura ring, which is one of the many wearables you can get now. The Whoop band is another. The Apple Watch does a good job too. Um, and the Oura ring measures all sorts of things. Your heart rate, heart rate variability, temperature, respiratory rate, and steps. Well, I've done a few today on this coastal walk and so on. And oh, it may not surprise you that over the last... I've been here nine days in Cyprus now and the weather is just great i mean it is for october it's so nice and it's been so long since we've been away um, on holiday that it's just an absolute treat and it may not surprise you that as i look out to see i'm facing sort of southwest at the moment and the sun is directly ahead of me and i'm getting a, a, a slight tan on my chicken legs as i as i look out to see and um, it may not surprise you to hear that my heart rate variability has done fairly well this this last week or so it's been a very interesting time for me recently, and I know a lot of people think about HRV and how they can improve it. And for the uninitiated, I'm sure you are initiated already, but the higher your heart rate variability, the more healthy you are and the more healthy your heart is too. And the thinking is that um, your heart needs to be able to adjust to variations as well as possible. If you're being chased by a lion, you're going to go from very relaxed to very unrelaxed very quickly. And the, the more... Uh, variability and difference in length of time between beats in your heart, the better it is for your health. And I probably haven't explained that very well. I'm sure there are scientists and technicians who could explain it a lot better, but that's the basic thinking. And my heart rate variability has been in the doldrums for quite some time, as, a, as per the Ura ring, which measures it overnight. It's quite windy now. I really hope this is recording okay, because otherwise it's going to be such a waste of my time. I've been trying to work out why, because since May, my heart rate has been going up every month. My heart rate variability has been going up every month, and now it's almost double what it was back in May. And I've put it down to a couple of things. Firstly, there's been some big life changes for me recently. Um, I've left the, the comfort of a, of a fairly well-paid part-time, admittedly, I was three days a week at Sky, but May was the last full month that I did at Sky, and since then, I've been running my own business, writing more and podcasting more and focusing on that side of things. And 
with, with the job at Sky came lots of nice perks, including the fact that I got to work with great people, talk about sport for a living, and I only work three days a week there, but you know, do other stuff on the side. But there also came various sort of negatives, working for people you don't massively respect all the time. <laughs> Maybe that's sort of revealing more than I should on there, but on, on this podcast, but that's, that's the reality of it. Um, as well as midnight finishes, working almost every weekend, that sort of thing isn't particularly helpful to one's overall health, is it, and vitality. So, as I say, the last full month that I did there was May, and since then my heart rate variability has been going up every month, and I don't think that's any surprise. I think, you know, my circadian rhythms have had a chance to realign themselves much better. As I say, I worked at, until midnight at least once a week, and that means at three minutes to midnight you're staring into a lot of bright lights and you're sort of quite jacked up because you can't TV present half-heartedly. And then I'd get home and I wouldn't get a full night's sleep and I'd be working every weekend and that sort of thing. And now it, there's a more stable rhythm. I've got to say, I've not looked back at all. I do miss the people. There are lots of terrific people that I worked with. And, and, and that line about respect only applies to one or two, I have to say. You know, there's so many... Uh, lovely colleagues and friends who I've stayed in touch with since and a lot of them have been in in contact over the last couple of months I'm I'm seeing a lot of them next week I think Um, so that aspect of it I do miss but there's not much else that I miss I must say Um, especially as my business um, publishing and writing is flourishing and so is this it's podcasting so that's that's good Um, but is there another explanation for how much the heart rate variability is going up? I've been using the Ura Ring since 2018, and this month is on course to comfortably be the best month ever for my heart rate variability. Now, obviously, I was working in TV since 2018 as well, so it might simply just be that. It's my body coming down from all those years of working late and in an intense TV environment. And by the way, the electromagnetic fields in TV are pretty intense. I mean, in the studio at Sky, there's probably 400 screens. You've got two, you've got a mic pack and an earpiece pack strapped to your body, emitting huge amount of radio frequencies. I, I uh, shudder to think, actually, because I looked into it once at how much they were emitting and how close to my crotch they were <laughs> when they were attached to my belt. Um, so not wearing them day to day as well. And um, all those reasons that we've already covered with, with leaving the safety and security of that job. But I wonder if there's something else going on. As I said, there's been lots of um, big life events going on for me over the, over the last well, few years, really. But we had our wedding reception a couple of weeks ago, and now we're actually on honeymoon here in Cyprus. How many people listening watched Bampsy the Bear at the Kids Club every evening for their honeymoon? Well, I don't think many, but we have. And I wouldn't change anything about it. Um, and I wonder if there's a bit of a... It was certainly felt like there was some tension heading up to the wedding, but all the love. I mean, it was, you know, it's a cliche to say it's, the, it's the, one of the best days of your life, but it was. It was fantastic. It was just so lovely having all my family and friends and all Faith's family and friends there and all having a good time and not knowing up to the day whether it would actually take place or not because there was always the worry that it didn't... Obviously, it mattered if anybody got COVID, but if me or Faith had got COVID, that would have been the end of our wedding reception. So we had to rather isolate for a couple of weeks beforehand. And uh, I wonder if there's a bit of a release and that is what's contributing to the HRV as well. What's The other reason I wanted to talk about detox and HRV is what's interesting is that I've not always felt brilliant the last couple of months. And I've been taking this product called Toxaprevent, which I've talked about elsewhere. And there's a link on my site if you want to go and have a look. It's a product that can help you uh, eliminate toxins and soak up histamine in the body, essentially. Absorb histamine is probably a better phrase. And I think it's working very well, but I wonder if it's sort of set in chain a bit of a detox reaction in my body because suddenly my stomach's been a little bit unsettled. I've not always felt 100% healthy over the last couple of months, and yet my heart rate variability is so very high. So if anyone listening to this has got any thoughts on that, um, I'd love to know and um, maybe you've gone through something similar, but uh, as far as this new phase of my life, being married, um, working for myself, fully responsible for my own income, <laughs> no pension paid for by a, by a kind company, um, that's, um, 
that all seems to be going well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here, I'm going to go for a little bit of a further walk. As I say, I've walked through the Tomb of the Kings, I've walked along the Paphos coastline, there's some more archaeological ruins from well before 300 BC on my left as I look in, and, and the beaches on my right. And I'm sitting in a sort of corrugated iron shelter which has been they've sort of put these plonked these all along the coast with lovely benches so you can shelter from the sun it's providing very little shelter but it is a nice bench to sit on and record this podcast so what i'm going to do is going to pause and listen back to check it's half acceptable to listen to when i come back i'm going to talk about the new blue blockers in town and purifying water and a great book i've been reading on this trip We'll be back with the podcast in one second, but today's podcast partner is Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. This is the magnesium product that I take, so I'm very pleased that it is my podcast partner on Zestology. It is the only organic, that's important to me, full spectrum magnesium supplement that includes seven unique forms of magnesium. And really, you know, I could wax lyrical on how great it is, but I think the best thing to do is just for you to try it. If you're having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, one of the best things you can possibly do is start getting enough magnesium. But please don't rush to the shop and buy the first magnesium supplement you can see. Because most magnesium supplements only use the cheap stuff that firstly goes through you. Um, and that's, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, don't need to go into too many details there. But um, secondly, it doesn't really work. You don't absorb it properly. There are actually seven unique forms of magnesium and you must get all of them if you want to experience the calming, sleep-enhancing effect and the nice effects on your muscle as well. I definitely feel differently when I take magnesium and that is why I take it every day. So you can go to magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology. It's a special page just there. Use the code Zestology to save 10% when you try Magnesium Breakthrough. That is magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology. Um, you'll get your exclusive 10% discount. You get the chance to get more than $50 worth of supplements for free as well. And as I say, I could wax on as much as I like about this. But really, you're just going to have to try it. It is an excellent magnesium supplement, and that is why I use it and recommend it. If you're in the UK, go to bioptimizers.co.uk and use the same discount, Zestology 10, wherever you are in the world. That's it. Back to the show. Okay, yeah, the sound quality isn't quite what I wanted, but we'll just have to get on with it. <laughs> um, I'm now in Paphos, the, the centre of the town. Um, I've completed the coastal walk, which was quite rugged, and I'm in a little shady back street. It is fearsomely hot for the middle of October, which is when I'm recording this. And um, so it's nice to be out of the sun, in the shade, and scratch beneath the surface of Paphos. And it's, it's quite charming, I must say. It's definitely, you describe it as sort of a bit sort of um, rough around, not rough around the edges, a sort of faded glory I guess it's not um it's not pristine and new everywhere you look but it's all the more charming because of that there's a small but not particularly cheesy tourist scene from what I've seen and obviously all these incredible places to see as well um and uh, yeah here I am for the second part of this podcast um I realized that originally I scheduled this podcast to provide a bit of an update on my book when life is a bit meh because it came out about six months ago and I haven't really done much of that update and I don't think I'm going to or maybe I'll do another podcast on this one suffice to say that one of the things I spoke about quite a bit was cold plunges and the effect of the cold and um, combining cold with nature so sort of wild swimming and I have had a cause to reflect on quite a pause to reflect on quite a few occasions on this holiday how incredibly energising it is. And this podcast is all about energy, just getting into the sea <laughs> every morning. And I've found that I can go from sluggish to fully alert. And my mood boosted as well, very, very quickly, just by doing that. It's, it's, I wish I could do it at home. I suppose there's nothing stopping me getting a tub in the garden and filling it up with icy water in the middle of winter. I'd probably do a similar job, wouldn't it? I may well do that. But I did want to talk about a couple of other things as I sit on this back street in Paphos. Um, the first is a new blue blocking glasses that uh, I've been trying out. Um, I've been using blue blockers, the company called Blue Blockers, and there's no E in the blue, 
for a few years and I like them because they're actually, they're cheap. I think they don't look quite as silly as most blue blockers and they get the job done. They block out all the blue light in the evening and they help you sleep better. There's a new company called Viva Rays and they've bought out this set of glasses that is a great idea because it's three different sets of blue blocking glasses. The first you can wear all day. But you wouldn't really, well personally I wouldn't want to wear it all day, but you would definitely wear them when you're looking at a computer screen. Now I have found recently that my eyes are not just not as good when I look at a computer screen all day. It's actually quite shocking how different it is. And um, it's pretty clear to me that it's the artificial light, it's staring at a screen right in front of me. And I've been trying out these, um, these Viva Rays to see if that makes a difference. And I think it does so far. These are the daytime glasses for the Viva Rays. You'd wear them when you're looking at a computer screen. They're very lightly tinted. They look good. They actually look relatively stylish for blue blockers. Um, and I think they sort of do the job quite nicely. Um, something I've been doing here a lot is sunning and palming. I've got very into natural eyesight improvement methods. Um, and looking at the Bates method a lot more, and I'm absolutely fascinated by it. And, and two of the theories of the Bates method are, if you look at the sun with your eyes closed, and then you turn, tilt your head left and right, um, so that your pupils are going from sun to shade. And then you do some palming, which is basically covering your eyes with your palms, so they're going from very, very bright light to very, very dark very quickly it essentially strengthens the eye and improves your vision. And there's a large community of people, and I've had some of these people on my podcast, who believe that there is no such thing as um, presbyopia, which is what happens to your eyesight in your 40s, for example. There's no such thing as that. Um, you, can, you can work on your eyesight and you can improve it. And you, it, once you start wearing glasses, it's a slippery slope. Well, I am in my 40s and I definitely have worse eyesight than I used to and that is why I'm interested in these techniques and I've been doing a bit of palming and sunning and I have to say, I think my eyes have been much better on this holiday because I haven't been looking at a laptop at all. And they're not dreadful, but I'm sort of at the stage where if I read the newspaper in dim light, I struggle to see it and I never used to be like that. I used to pride myself on good eyesight. So I digress a little bit because from the Bates method, I've, I've gone from Viva Rays to the Bates method, but you can use the first set of glasses during the day and then you snap on, it's sort of like magnetic, but it looks, they're, they're proper high end, these glasses. Early evening, you snap on a slightly darker amber lens and then late evening, you snap on the red lens, which blocks out all the blue light. And I think, I, I like them, I think they look great. It's a great idea. You can use them all day. You're blocking out the junk light. There's no doubt in my mind that the quality of the light that goes into your eyes has a big impact on your energy levels, which is all, this podcast is all about energy. The only thing I would say about the Viva Rays is that I tend to be someone who loses sunglasses and blue blockers as well. And um, I just have a feeling that I might lose one of the components of these Viva Rays at some point. But apart from that, I think they're a brilliant idea and I have a feeling they're going to do very well as a company as well. Um, I did want to, just before I finish this podcast, uh, talk about the book that I've been reading out here. I'm going to do a dedicated book podcast, as I usually do at the end of the year, um, on the six best books that I've read this year. And this, this book that I've been reading out here may well make it. If you're in any way interested in self-improvement and understanding yourself and your emotions a little bit better, then the book that I've been reading, Irvin Yalom, is superb. And I've recommended one of his books on this podcast before, before I think about two and a half years ago. He wrote Love's Ex Executioner, which I read and loved. It's all about a psychiatrist meeting with, um, with his patients. And uh, the book that I've just read is called Becoming Myself, A Psychiatrist's Memoir. And it's the story of his life interspersed with meetings with clients and instances from his own life. And it will get you thinking about your life. And I, I really do think it's... Do you know what it's made me think about a lot on this holiday? It's made me think about my dreams. I've always slightly poo-pooed dream analysis, but um, 
he is probably the world's most celebrated psychiatrist and takes dreams very seriously. And I've been noting down my dreams as, as they happen, or as soon as they happen, even if it's in the middle of the night, I'd be making a note of what, what the dreams were. And he's made me think about my dreams a little bit more, as well as all sorts of different areas of my life. And he tells a very, very good story as well. He's a, he's a published author who has written many celebrated books, not just Love's Executioner, which is probably his most famous one, and he's famous all over the world as well. But he's also written quite a few books around grief and bereavement, which are probably going to be next on my list. And um, I'd recommend it. I think it's just like a, an easy read, but a, a thought-provoking read. And I think that's, you know, often when it's non-fiction, it can be a, a tough slog, can't it? And that is not the case with this book. Becoming Myself, a, a psychiatrist's memoir, is also just clearly a very, very decent, thoughtful man, empathetic He's changed a lot of people's lives. You, you kind of wish he was your psychiatrist. And uh, he's, yeah, he's, uh, it, it's a good one. I think you'll enjoy that. As I say, it, it may well make my six best books of the year. Right, well, I've almost finished my afternoon on my own. Um, I started off at the Tomb of the Kings and I walked all the way around. It was so hot earlier in the day. It's now a little bit less hot. I've got a feeling I'm sunburnt on my feet. I'm going to go back to the hotel now. As I say, it'll be kids' club tonight, and I can't wait for that. <laughs> um, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a honeymoon of two halves. A little bit of exploring on my own, but most of the time just loving the um, the child-friendly hotel we're staying in. And our son's absolutely loving it, and, and has made friends himself, which is brilliant. And uh, thank you, as always, for listening to Zestology. Thank you to my podcast partners, Inside Tracker. If you are thinking about tracking your health and wellness, tracking your goals like heart rate variability, which we spoke about earlier on in this podcast, and um, tracking uh, all sorts of different areas of your life, including diet, then Inside Tracker is the one to go. And also, Magnesium Breakthrough. Um, if you go to magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology, you will get a whole chunk of change off and um, I think they did have a deal where you would get a bottle free that may well be now I think they contacted me in the last couple of weeks to say it's wild stocks laugh so there might, might not be a free one anymore if you go to magbreakthrough.com slash zestology all the details will be there and you might have a free one or you might not but it's worth trying and I, I definitely bought a, a bottle of Mag Breakthrough out here as well there's one more thing I wanted to talk about I, I've just remembered and it is um, purifying water when we go on holiday in the UK, we take our Berkey water filter with us. And I've, I've missed it a lot here because I realise how much water I drink and how difficult it is when you have to rely on plastic, non-reusable bottles of water that you have to get from the hotel bar as opposed to your Berkey water filter, which you could fill up with pretty low quality water. And it is so high quality that it'll filter it all perfectly. Um, it wasn't really practical to bring it abroad, so we haven't bought it. But um, I've got no affiliation with Berkey. I wish I did, because I think they're great. Um, but it might be worth checking out Berkey water filters. Simply, they've been on my mind, because I've been drinking a lot of water on this holiday, and all of it has been out of plastic bottles, and I can't really see a way around it. I haven't found any glass bottles of water, and I'm not sure that the tap is up to the task here, but it would have been perfectly fine if we'd had the Berkey. So, something to look out for. Berkey do have a water bottle, a small plastic water bottle with a filter in it, which is something that I have used in the past, but it's not very practical when there's three of you and one of them's two years old. Anyway, that is, that is quite enough rambling from me. Thank you for listening to this podcast of Zestology. Apologies if it was a little bit windy. It's a um, podcast recorded on location in Paphos. I will no doubt be back at home next week and I've got some good stuff uh, lined up for you in November. Thanks for listening. See you next time.